Okay, next we have David Lemons, who is the uh, manager of soils at Nature's Way. And as Abby also works at Nature's Way, I think all of us have a close association with that place. But he's going to talk about mulch and compost and how it impacts soil. Okay. Hello everyone, I'm David. I am the sales manager at Nature's Way Resources. Um, so I first uh, began getting interested in plants when I started working at Plants for All Seasons back in 2015. Uh, that's when I first began to learn the different types of soil blends and fertilizers used in landscaping, uh, the difference between chemical and organic practices, and it's just when I first really became passionate about plants and horticulture in general. Um, so I did begin working with John at Nature's Way uh, in 2018 as a sales associate. Um, that while we did have like a small section of native plants over at Plants for All Seasons, uh, they're much more focused on natives over at Nature's Way. And um, I began to learn more of the benefits of using your natives in landscapes and um, just using... Uh, um, and then you can do like a standard potting soil. <coughs> um, at some of these bigger box stores, you may notice that the potting soils are like a lighter, fluffier texture. That's because a lot of those are going to be peat-based soils. Now, while peat can be good for certain things, um, <clears throat> it's not the most sustainable resource at the rates that they're harvesting it from the bogs up in Canada. So we try to stay away from that as much as we can. And um, we'll substitute that with different types of sand. Uh, there's also expanded shale, which is like a porous rock material that helps with the drainage aspect in those soils as well. So that's typically what we recommend more so for like container planting. <clears throat> and then you've got like different leveling mixtures depending on what it is you're trying to accomplish. If you're just filling up holes in your yard, leveling out certain areas, um, that's typically gonna be a sandier mixture as well because sand's gonna do a really good job of packing down staying intact, leveling out those areas. You can always add topsoil or compost on top of that if you were uh, trying to get like the grass to grow back in or whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. So we're gonna get a little bit further into these different components. <clears throat> Again, obviously compost is very important. Um, it is the life of the soil and it's what's gonna add all the nutrients. So composting is a natural process used by nature to return nutrients uh, contained in organic materials that were once alive to the soil. There's different types of composting. Some of you may do composting at your home. Um, <clears throat> that can be a little bit tedious depending on the size of your pile. Uh, it takes a long time. So we do larger scale composting at Nature's Way. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. There is a style of composting that's called windrow composting, which involves some heavy machinery that's consistently turning these piles. Uh, while that's an effective method, it doesn't yield the highest quality material uh, which is what we do at Nature's Way. That's called static pile composting. <clears throat> now, now you do turn the material from time to time, uh, but towards the end of the process, you want to let that just sit in a pile uh, for an extended period of time, and it builds fungal nutrients. It builds a fungal system through that pile so that you're creating more microbes and just more overall nutrients uh, for your plants and your soil. Um, there's a couple of different types of compost that we carry at Nature's Way. What we're really known for over there is our leaf mold compost. <clears throat> that leaf mold compost is going to consist of a few different things. There's some broken down aged leaf matter. Again, we add some manure and food and vegetable waste into that. Um, it does take a while. It takes at least 18 to 24 months to really get a finished product from something like that. Um, the added manure and food waste um, are both heavy in both bacterial and fungal nutrients, which is going to be good for mainly vegetables are going to what, or what prefer that heavier bacterial ratio. Uh, the fungal compost is more of a general purpose compost um, that does, again, consist of that broken down aged leaf matter, um, as well as like some different compost overs. <clears throat> um, it's also aged for an extended period of time, at least 12 to 24 months. And this creates a humus-like material that is used generally throughout flower beds, uh, shrubs, again, fruit trees, and over 90% of the perennials do prefer a fungal dominated soil. So that's something that you can use pretty much anywhere. Um, and then you've got your mulch component. So most people know mulch as what you use on the very top part of your flower beds. A lot of people will put two to four inches on that top layer in order to keep the weeds out and retain the moisture. Um, but we do also use it in our soil blends because it does help with 
aeration and help to prevent drainage issues. And composted mulches will continue to break down and add even further fungal nutrients into your soil. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I think I pretty much covered that entire slide. Uh, let's see here. We'll move on to topsoil. So topsoil generally consists of a combination of sand, silt, and clay. Um, and it's typically the base for most of our soil blends. You can use that in pretty much anything. Uh, while there are small amounts of nutrients present in the topsoil, it's typically combined with like a compost or a mulch component because again, that's where you're gonna get your organic matter from. At Nature's Way, we do what we call an enriched topsoil. So during the beginning stages, we will add either mulch overs or like a fine mulch component into the topsoil that breaks down and so it does contain some organic matter. You'll get a little bit of nutrients in that to begin with. <clears throat> and lastly, we've got our sand. Um, <clears throat> we use mortar sand at Nature's Way, which is like a wash sand that's also been sifted. So you're not gonna get any weed seeds in that, um, no organic matter. And that sand is used in most of our soil blends and it's also a general purpose soil. Uh, it's really fine <coughs> and uh, it does again help it from clumping together that that's what's going to keep your soil from turning into mud and it also helps with drainage issues people also use that just to level out little spots in their yard grass a lot of times will grow right back on top of that especially saint augustine but you can always add a little bit of compost to help out um, another big product of ours that's starting to take off is our remineralizer so remineralization is currently one of the hottest topics in soil science. Um, what it is is basically adding trace minerals back into your soil. So our remineralizer consists of basalt sand, granite sand, and green sand, and you get different trace minerals from each of those. <laughs> so trace minerals naturally deplete from your soil about every four to five years, um, but a little bit does go a long way, so it's never a bad time to just replenish a little bit of those trace minerals. We sell that in like a 40 pound bag and one of those will cover up to 800 or 1,000 square feet. So people will just take a small handful, add that to your three to five gallon pot and it could make a big difference over time. What does that sell for? Sorry? What's the price of uh, It's about $20 a bag. And again, it'll cover 800 to 1,000 square feet. So uh, always a good product to have on hand. And I did bring some samples today of the different components I just discussed. We can kind of pass these around if you'd like. So this first one here, it's got a browner texture. This is the mulch component. Um, thank you, sir. So that's going to be a woodier material uh, that's really light and fluffy. This next one is the compost. This is going to be a finer ground material that's really rich, almost like a chocolate brown. They do look very similar. They do look similar. Those two especially, uh, the mulch and the compost. This is an enriched topsoil, so it's a little saturated, so that's gonna be a heavier material that's been enriched with some of our mulch component. And then last but not least, you've got just your standard sand there that can be added to just about anything. <laughs> And while they're passing those around, does anyone have any questions about anything? She, she does. Sure. Yeah, I was just wondering what your these basic components were of your mulch. Uh, and also, well, I'll ask my other questions in a second. But do you use a pine? I think they don't have that. It looks like you use pine. So our mulch consists of a lot of the different natives in the area um, that we get dropped off by different landscapers. Trees that are brown Correct. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so we also use pine needles in some of our materials. Uh, we have a blueberry mix, actually, which is very similar to our landscape mix, which is really just uh, equal parts, those four components I just discussed. And then we add composted pine needles into that mixture to help with the acidity as well. So, right, exactly. Um, somewhat. It's fairly neutral but some of them are the, the soil in this area um, there's there's depending on where you're at some of it's sandier some of it's more clay like um, the only consistency I've seen is everything's really compact so you want to really monitor the moisture uh, for the most part but 
We do actually sell the pine straw by itself as well. Some people use that as a mulch, especially on like a blueberry bed or something like that. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Um, if you were going to do that on your lawn, can you like take it by the handful? That's how most people do it. Yeah, most people just kind of chicken feed it throughout their grass. So one of those bags will do up to 800 square feet. Uh, a standard size yard here in the Woodland Spring area is probably like maybe 3,000 square feet. So three to four bags will typically do your entire landscape. <clears throat> well, work in a, well, work in a fertilizer spreader? Or Not so well. Yeah, we've tried it and so-so, but honestly, it's, it's better to just kind of distribute it, chicken feed it out by hand. Yeah, seems to be the best way. It's more fun to do it that way. There you go, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all I've got for today, unless anybody else has any questions. Any more questions for David? Questions? No. No? Thank you. Okay, excellent. Thank you. We're going to take about a 10 minute break so that we can start on time at 2 o'clock, so if you want to be up outside, get a little sunshine. Or we can start early.